Good morning, everyone. Jim here. This is uh, Lewis. Lewis is a growing lab puppy, approximately nine months old. Very happy, very hyper, very excitable. Has a zeal for life, which is uh, extraordinary. That creates our own set of opportunities, if you will. When we have a dog that's so happy, so excited, so ready to do anything, <clears throat> we have to balance our encouragement with lowering our energy level at times. We use our energy level to build and get him to do things, but we make sure that our praise isn't over the top if it'll cause him to break a command when we praise him. What's the way to find that out? Is when you're working with your dog and you go to praise him, he pops up time after time because he's so excited. Dial it down with your tone a little, and then train it so that you can come back to that tone at some point in time, okay? So we're gonna go through the obedience right here. We've got something falling this morning. It looks like leaves and it's not fall, it's spring. So it must be old leaves from winter. But we're gonna start working right now. Watch what I do. Watch what I'm doing with my hands. Listen to my voice, the hand signals. See what happens here. Uh, he, Lewis has got a real good start on life. I think he's going to be a great dog. Just got to make sure that our owners stay on top of things, are very consistent, very loving, and uh, by all means making sure that he understands nothing's for free. He's got to earn a living. And I believe they will do that. So here we go. Let's go. Here's the tone of that boy. Let's go, of course, is walking loose on the leash. You remember in our trainings family, He's so excited, he's going to want to get out in front. We don't want him getting out in front, at least now. Once we prove it, that we're the leaders and you want to take a leisure walk uh, with him, eh? and you want to take a leisure walk with him and him being in front, I don't mind. But what we're trying to do is establish that we're the leaders right now. So in our let's go, he's with us here. He's not out here. Uh, one of the uh, analogies I made is if he gets out here and we provide our little bite or consequence out here, when he's out here, he's thinking we're biting him for being here. In reality, if he's gonna move out that far, we need to bite him as he starts to move out, and there's the bite. You know we're not here to intimidate, dominate, or hurt him. See how he backed up right there? Uh, one other little uh, note, and this is important for all owners out there, especially the people that are training with their dogs, it rained last night. There are a lot of scents coming up from the ground. Lewis is not one of these guys to always be smelling, but you notice he's put his nose down a little bit. That's still no excuse. You saw me tap the leash. But uh, after a quick little rain, after a rain, all the scents of the ground come up, and it makes it almost like heaven for dogs to check everything out, because, you know, that's one of their big senses. So here we go. Let's go. Good boy. I turn. He follows. In the beginning, when he follows, and, and later if you have time, praise him for following. That a boy. Good boy. See how that tail went? Now, if I went this way and turned and he didn't come, I would tap the leash this way. And I would say, no, let's go. If he got out in front of me, I would tap behind him. If he got behind me, I would actually try to encourage him first. If that didn't work, then I would tap the leash. Good, that's the sit command, hand signal for sit. Atta boy. When he does what we want, we praise him. We let him know, verbally and physically, sometimes with the tree. Oh, no, sit, sorry about that. I'll have to go back and review the video to see if I moved my hands in such a way that he thought it was a down, but that's still, again, no excuse. Good boy. Break. That's the hand signal for the release. All right, come on, sit. Good. Why did I come right back to the sit? Because if he did down last time, I want to catch him this time. Anytime our dog does something that we don't like and don't want, that's an opportunity for us to fix it. And the way we fix it is working over and over and over again. Break. Sit. Good. And typically, we come back and revisit that command that was missed two or three times in a row correctly. That's called proofing. Break. Atta boy, you heard that tone. So now you've got sit. That same command is for sit beside us. Atta boy. 
Now the next command beside us while we're here is the D-O-W-N. And we would say down, and there was the hand signal. Good boy. Good boy. Down means down, just like sit means sit. When we tell our dog to sit, we tell our dog to down, we don't have to say stay unless you absolutely want to. I don't. But he has to stay in that down command, in that sit command, until we release him. See his nose again? No. Nope. Down. When I say stay, that means pack your bags. You're going to be there a while. You don't have to wait for the next command. But typically when I say sit or down, he has to do what we ask and be ready to work again. All right, sit. Good boy. Hear that tone to get him up? Sit from down is one of the hardest commands to teach. That's something I do from the beginning. Now I'll step out. He ha no, don't sit. When I step out, he has to hold it. Right. Let's go. So we did the D-O-W-N. Let me back up a minute. If he did not S-I-T when I asked him, I would, you remember how on the let's go we tap like this or like this back? If he didn't S-I-T when I asked, I would go, no, S-I-T, okay? <laughs> Good boy. He doesn't know how to spell. At least I don't think he does. And then if he didn't D-O-W-N, I would go, no, tap. See how the, right. See how the cues are uh, telling him what he missed? So I just think that's very reinforcing to him. So here we go again. Sit. Now from in front. Down. Good. Notice we had down from the side, down from in front. Good boy. Break. Sit. Good. Next command we're going to do is the P-L-A-C-E command. It's, uh, you'll hear the word in just a second. That's a command. Break. Why did I break him then? Real quick, I don't like to put a dog in sit for a long, long time. I don't like to put that pressure on their hips. If we're going to be stationary, I'm either going to break him or I'm going to put him in a D-O-W-N command. And why am I going to do that? I don't want to put the pressure here and I want to allow him to be comfortable. Even when I break him, even when I'm just standing here with the leash, he can never ever pull me again, okay? Never. If he started pull, what do you think I would do? I would tap the leash back towards me. See how he walked in and then praise. That's important. When our dog, good boy, letting him know he can do what he wants. Now if he wants to smell, I'll allow it, but if I saw he was starting to pick up something, I would bite it. I never want my dogs picking up things off the ground. Good boy. That's good. So now we're going to do the PLACE command. Uh, what that is, is a bed command where we can put our dog in on his bed. He can lay down, sit down, stand up. He can read a book. I don't care what he does, but he stays on his bed. One of the things when we have children or we have guests or other dogs, we can't, not so much other dogs, but children and guests, when we put him on that command, that's his sanctuary, on that bed, which is the P-L-A-C-E, that's his sanctuary. We don't want to come in and tell him to sit or down or do whatever on that bed. Place is place, okay? I point to the bed. If he does it, I'm gonna praise him as soon as his fourth foot hits the bed. Everything, sit down. When they do it, try in the moment to praise them. When they mess up, try to bite them or consequence in the moment. All right, buddy, play. play. Good boy. Good boy. Pet love. And he can stay there. Uh, as you know, he can do this for a long time. He can do this with cats dogs, anything else. We work this over and over and over again. One of the things I like to tell my clients though, it's not a great idea to start putting the cart before the horse. In dog training, that means trying to get him to do things off leash and further away from your control until you know he's gonna do it. Because if he ever breaks that command from 20 or 30 feet away, and he starts running from you or whatever, he understands that you aren't the leader you think you are. So it's always important to start all of your obedience in close proximity, on leash. Loose leash, but on leash. When he's obeying eight, nine, I prefer nine times out of 10, the first time you ask, that's when you can start doing off leash, and I normally do that inside. Maybe dragging the leash, maybe dragging a little paracord line, maybe just having the tap. Atta boy. Right. Let's go. Come on. 
Another command I like is the load up command. Some people like to use it. Some people allow their dogs to, to get on furniture, okay? I might allow my dogs to get up on the furniture, but it's not their choice. It's always by design by me, by giving a command. This command also will work real well for loading up in a car. Atta boy. You notice my praise came as soon as he got up there. I might give him a little treat for that. Good boy. If he was learning the lesson, I would give him the treat, the verbal praise, and the physical praise as soon as he did it. Great. That's just sort of a reward for a job well done. So now we've got the basics down. We've done the in motion commands, starting to teach Lewis to sit her down while we're moving around, sit her down when we're playing the game, okay? Playing the game means playing with him. So we're, sit. When I do, down, stay. Remember I said stay a while ago? Stay is the perfect command for him to be put in a down, I say stay, pack your bags, you're going to be there a while. He doesn't have to listen to me. He can lay on his side. He can smell the ground. He can chew his bone. The important thing with that stay command is to let him know he has to be there. The other thing with the stay command, we can use it as a barrier, imaginary barrier to a room. Stay. And if he comes through the room, what are we going to do? We're going to grab the leash, tap, 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 no, 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 stay. Good boy. Every consequence deserves a little praise on the back end. Break. Sit. Good. Next is the recall command. Come. Good. He comes, he sits in front of, front of us, and he's in the sit until we release him, okay? Break. That we always start our come command on leash. Why? Because we can control it. Why? Because we can start adding di different factors. Come. See how he turned away from the cat? Good boy. Break. I use a treat an awful lot on the come. When he's off leash in the yard, I would never tell him to come unless I knew he was coming. So how do we get around that? The best way to get around that is if he's out in the yard, we get his attention. Lewis, hey buddy, come. See how, if you go back and look at the video, right, how about a foot or two in, he started getting real happy. I said come in an excited way. I am marrying that action of him being happy with a command. The important thing about off-leash come is that when he gets to you, you can never do anything negative with him. If you need to provide a consequence or a bite, you go get him. If you have to go to work or you want to put him up, call him to you, release him, spend a minute or so, then take him in. Don't let it be a factor of him thinking that when he comes, he's going to be put up. He's going to be punished. Very important that way. Sit. Good. The next is the heel command. It's not a command I use a whole lot, but the heel command is where Lewis is in an imaginary box beside us. Our goal is to keep him in that box. When we stop, he sits automatically. Great for tight situations, uh, like at a park, in a pet store, anything along those lines. Walking down a boardwalk, we want him real close. Can we do the same thing with let's go? Sure we can. But some people like to have the, uh, the heel. My command is like that with my hand. Heel. And he's right here in the box. I stop. Good boy. That's a little slow. Now if he did that next time, I would tap the leash. Let's see if he does it. Heel. See how I tapped up to get it? We would do good boy. We would do the same with the let's go. Break. Uh, sit. No sit. Tap. Good boy. Heel. Now, did you see he stepped, he sat on this stick? He's a big retriever. Good boy. Break. I don't know if you saw, I actually healed him right on top of that stick. If you go back and play the video, you will see that that started turning him on. You remember how I said he's happy, crazy, wants to play? He's a puppy. He's an excitable puppy. That doesn't mean he can't do the command. He still needs to do a command if you give it to him, okay? Uh, that's why I didn't give him a real hard time right afterwards, because you'll see him looking at his, at his leg, and then when he walked by, he wanted to get involved, just like with the cats right now. We've had him in the place command, and these cats are all around, and he'll hold it. 
How do we get there? Repetition, repetition, repetition. Praising Him when He does it. The key is praise with words and touch, okay? Sometimes with a treat or a toy. If He does something wrong, we bite Him. You know, the best way I like to bite is tapping the leash. I tap straight up for sit, uh, down for down, and in the direction I want Him to go in movement commands, okay? If I didn't have the leash on and he did something wrong, I might grab his snout and tell him no, okay? And also I'll grab his collar when I do that because I don't want to pull him away. When I bite him like that, when I get through, I'm going to still come back to pet him. Another one, I could go, hey, nah, like that. I could even grab his scruff, not too hard, okay? I could even go, no. The only things that I've done with him really are the little snout command when I didn't have him on leash or where the leash was not quite available when we were working in my home. Wow, I threw a lot at you in a number of minutes there. Use this to go back and look and see what you need to do with Lewis. He's a fantastic dog. He's got a lot of energy, a lot of play. That's quite all right. That's what you want. Uh, but there has to be the boundaries and structure for you to have a life worth living with him so you can take him out and do the things you want him to do. You know, he wasn't walking real well before. He wasn't coming real well before. He wasn't staying on the place real well before or on your bed before. Now he's doing all those things. And we have worked together. I think he's going to be great. Two weeks is actually, yeah, two weeks right now is where we are. And he's done that much in two weeks. Learning is a lifelong endeavor, not only for dogs, but for humans. The structure of the obedience, what do I mean by structure is practicing every day? You know, uh, four or six weeks or longer if you have that desire, but you need to, to provide that structure so that you're the leader, okay? He needs to work for his food. He needs to sit at the doors when you come and go. If he comes up to you and, and wants padding and starts moving your hand around, I wouldn't pet him. I would in turn turn him around and ask him to do something. The only other thing, the last thing we had with this guy, because he's got two little girls he loves to get treats from, is when he first came here, he would lunge for the treats. We don't want a dog to lunge for the treats. Whenever I give a treat to the dog, I put it right here. So one of the things that happened, I would have my hand here, and he would lunge for it. Good boy, you can see it's there, but I'll, uh, I, Easy. Good. Take it. You can take it. Come on. Good. Break it. Sit. Atta boy. Take it. Good. Because you see how break, see how excited he still gets with the tree. So we have to control that a little bit. Thank you very much. My name is Jim Hodges. JimHodgesDogTraining.com. Jim Hodges Dog Training on Facebook. My number is 336-945-3232. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. As with all my clients, when I do uh, these residency programs or vacation dog training programs, it's important that if you have a question, let me know. And with my residency programs, I'm here for you forever. Any of the things that we've worked on here, they're free follow-ups as long as you come to me. Now, if I come to you, I'm going to charge because I have to leave this beautiful home and farm that i got, and uh, I like to, to be close to home. But you can come to me. I'm here to help. I thank you so much. He's a good boy. He's going to do well. I know you're going to do well. I've seen you in action. Take care. Bye-bye. Break. Ah,